everybody we will get the call kicked off here in about 15 seconds or so we got a lot of people that are are hopping on as you know this is a live training call we are going to get this recorded and um, get it out there we'll put it on youtube so you can view it uh, for your viewing pleasure if you are happen to be tuning in to the uh, the agency call my name is joe johnson i'm going to be your host today i want to thank everybody for for popping on the the training call today if you're watching this as a replay on youtube consider subscribing to our channel we put out uh, new content all the time some at least once a week sometimes twice a week so subscribe to the channel and you can check out the uh, different topics that we're going to be talking about so um, this week's call the topic is uh, it's kind of a best practices call I'm going to be uh, talking about contrast selling and the three option close you know I was working with an agent earlier this week and going over some techniques and and she was wanting to to kind of um, help improve her the, the closing techniques and learn how to you know close more sales get bigger premiums and she was kind of doing a modified three option close but not really more of just kind of a um, a payment close so we got her doing three option closing and not only did the her closing ratio went up she started getting bigger bigger premiums as well because you're adding uh, more value so before i get into all of that the couple of things i just want to talk about is is in in sales and the reason why your clients are going to buy from you it's it's based on it's based on the value and the service that you're providing that's as salespeople especially in what we do in life insurance you know there's a, a, a million different carriers and there's a lot of different life insurance companies out there the biggest thing that separates you from your competition whoever that is is you you are you're, you're the difference you're the difference between uh, another sales rep coming in behind you and potentially replacing your business if you do the proper job with your client and you sell them a a good product with good value but more importantly you you provide your sales and service and the service that you're going to provide that's why people are going to buy from you it's based on the value it's based on the perceived value that you the agent are giving to your your client what are your services how do you separate yourself from the competition what are you doing that's that's extra you know are you going to be there for your clients when they pass away or their loved ones pass away are you going to be there can they count on you can they call you are you providing that service you need to let your clients know that you're going to be there for them it's not just some 800 number that they're going to call oh my you know when i pass away my family's got to call the the life insurance company here's an 800 number no when when that time comes if there's a tragedy or you become critically or chronically ill uh, and death is near your family should be contacting me so we can get things you know get the process going get things lined up uh, this way i'm i'm informed these are the services that i'm going to provide for you the other thing that that um, i was teaching this agent on how to do and we're going to get in there's two types of of contrast selling that we're going to talk about one is the the three option close and we're going to talk about contrast about why you want there to be a big difference in in pricing uh, that's contrast and the reason why uh, contrast selling works it, it's it's human programming our brain is is programmed from primitive years to detect contrast in our environment it's a survival skill if you will one of the things that you can do in the beginning when you're talking to your client about the, the the product about your services that you can provide is that you want to build a huge contrast between what their life is now okay 
and what their life or what the situation, I should say, will be after they pass away. How are you going to improve the situation? That's in the bigger you build that contrast. You know, you're sitting with a client right now and you're going over, um, you know, why they sent the card in and if they have it, have they done any pre planning? Do they have life insurance in place now? And they don't. You need to build the picture, build a, a visual picture of what it's going to look like. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, God forbid you pass away tomorrow. What's that going to look like for your family? Can you describe that to me? You know, are they going to be scrambling? Who's going to have to pay the bills? Who's in charge of that? What's this going to look like? Um, you know, have you ever have you ever had to plan a funeral for someone? Have you ever had a family member that died died unexpectedly, and there was no no planning? And you talk about not only the emotional burden but the financial burden. And then you build the contrast of how your product, about the products and services that you're providing, your life insurance product, and your services that you're going to provide as the agent, how you're going to relieve all that. What, here, so here's, the, here's on the left, here's their situation now, which is not good. After, after being becoming a client of yours, this is how you're going to improve their situation. So you see how you're building the, the contrast? So now it's going to motivate your client to want to get from point A to point B. They don't want to be um, uh, the, the before picture. They want to be the after picture. There, there was a movie. I think it was the, um, I think it was Ten Men. You guys ever seen the movie Ten Men? Uh, Danny DeVito and some other really good actors, but what, they use contrast selling to sell their tin. Tin. When I'm talking about tin, I'm talking about aluminum siding. They were like aluminum siding salesmen, and kind of funny. They would go. They would. They would knock on the door of a client. They would find a house where you know all the paint was worn off the you know and the house really you know, needed siding or needed a really good paint job and they would knock on the door and the person would come out and they would say who they are, you know, from XYZ company and uh, we're running an ad campaign in your your house. We would like to put your house in our ad campaign as the before picture and um, and then here's the after picture. And the clients would be like, well, wait, I don't want my house to be the before picture. I want my house to be the after picture. And then they would make the sell because they were building that they were building that 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 contrast. So if you get good at at providing at building the services and how you separate yourself from from the competition and how you're going to build the contrast between what your client's life, what their life is like now without your product, without your services and then with and I promise you, if you do a good job at that, just by doing that, that little part, you're going to make more sales. But in order to do that, the things that you need to, to work on is, number one, is your, your likability. And I know I've talked this about before, but people need to, to like you. People will do business with you if they like you, okay? But they won't do business with you if they just like you. They need to not only like you, but they need to trust you. Uh, you need to you need to have the appearance of a trustworthy person. That's why when you're meeting someone new, when you're when you're door knocking your lead, or even if it's a uh, let's say it's a direct mail lead, and you're going to the appointment, and they know that you're coming. Let's say it's a pre pre set appointment. You still need to look and dress appropriately have your id badge on make sure that your uh your your groomed properly your shoes are clean you're presentable those are things that that the client is immediately going to judge you on whether we like it or not is it immediately when we look at somebody we're we're already in our head we're we're prejudging them okay someone looks like a slob you know we're going to think to ourselves, oh, they're not well kept. They're, you know, they're a slob. Maybe they're just dressing down for the day. Maybe actually they're super professional. But when you're in sales, your appearance 
means a lot. So dress professional. You know, if you have to, I'm not saying, you know, we don't wear suits, but typically when I, you know, go into the house, I'm wearing a button down or I'm wearing, um, in the summertime, I'm wearing a, uh, a golf shirt, a polo with the, uh, lo you know, logo typically on my, on my shirt. So make sure that you're, you're, you are, you, you come off as someone who's likable, professional, trustworthy, and also your confidence. Confidence sells. When you're confident about your presentation, when you're confident about your product, when you're confident about your services, you will make more sales. People feed, clients are going to feed off of your confidence and your conviction. So just make sure, you know, you don't, when you go in and you're making sales, don't think that you need to have this big, you know, bubbly personality. You know what I mean? We're not we're not real estate salespeople, okay? We are professional salespeople. Not not to insult real estate people, but at the end of the day, real estate people don't sell anything, okay? They're just they're order takers, okay? So we're not in real estate. We're in life insurance, okay? Set we're we're selling a, a product and we're selling services and we're selling peace of mind. Listen, at the end of the day, the main thing that our cu customers are worried about, our clients. When they send in that lead card or or they, you know, clicked on a Facebook ad or whatever it is, there was something emotionally that triggered them to do that, that they just want to make sure is, is that is that when they do pass away, they're not leaving their family with a financial burden. What we need to do is when we're presenting in the home is hit on those triggers. Don't be afraid to dig into the the emotions and the triggers of why they sent the card in, why they responded to the mailing, you know, what their life is gonna look like. What's it gonna look like? Describe to me, you pass away tomorrow, what's gonna happen? You know, that, you know, that's your, that's your, you know, if you don't have a plan in place, this is what happens when people don't have a plan in place. That's why I'm here. I'm here to make sure that doesn't happen to you. That's why you sent the card in, okay? Now, when it comes to the 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 three option close, and I know I've covered this before, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it again. I'm a big fan of the three option close. Giving because of the way the human brain works is that we're we're looking for choices. We want to look for choices, and we're also looking for for contrast in those choices. So in our mind, um, we can perceive what is the better deal. Remember, a good deal is perception. You know, whether, you know, you could buy a car and the dealer could have made a $10,000 profit, but in your mind, if you got a good deal, by God, it's a good deal, right? So perception is is everything. Uh, so when we're doing that three option close, which I'm going to go over with you now, it's important to make sure that you have a, a fairly substantial gap between price one Option one and option two, usually fit a uh, hundred uh, percent difference. You know what I mean? You want there to be a, a nice, a nice contrast. The one thing I want to cover is before you, before you show the client the pricing. And remember, before you show the pricing, you're you're pre-qualifying your client. You've already asked them the health questions. Okay, you've gone over their their medications. You've predetermined what their eligibility, you know, is is going to be. Whether they're going to be, you know, preferred, modified, graded, guaranteed issue, whatever it is, you've already determined that by asking them the the health questions. Before you show them the quotes. Remember, this is so important and not, I, I don't know if, if some agents just skip it because they're embarrassed or they think it's it's corny or, you know, they're not comfortable, but you got to get comfortable with this part. I swear, if you, if you do this properly, this one step, your sales are going to increase. And that is, I'm going to show Bob the, um, you know, I've, I've qualified him. I know what he qualifies for. He's going to qualify for preferred. I'm going to say something like this, Bob. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what most people are doing in in your situation. But Bob, it's really important. 
and this is where I'm going to lower my tone a little bit. I'm going to tap them on the hand. Bob, it's important. I just want to make sure is that when I show you what most people are doing in your situation, you got to promise me something. And that is promise me if what I'm showing you doesn't fit into your budget, that you'll let me know. Because, Bob, we can make adjustments. And I promise you, we can find something that will fit into your budget. And Bob, wouldn't you agree that at least getting some coverage in place is better than not having anything at all? And he's going to agree. Saying that one thing is going to help you close more deals. Because if you don't say that, what could happen, because at this point you don't know what their budget is, right? The other thing about budget is don't, don't prejudge people. Okay, just because you're in a, in a, in a, in a, a single wide trailer and the floor is caving in, you don't get to determine your client's budget. They get to determine it. You don't know what's going on. They could have, you know, their bills could be zero and, you know, maybe they're, they get social security and they're retired military and, you know, maybe they just, you know, have that lifestyle. You know, maybe they're getting two grand a month and they have, you know, $50,000 or more of disposable income. You you don't know. So it's not our job to prejudge. It's our job to lay out what their what their options are and guide our client to something that is going to fit their is going to fit their budget. So once I've said that and Bob agrees with me, yeah, sure, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I had already um I already filled this out. This is the three option worksheet. There's a couple of variations of this. This is one that I just put together for an agent who was asking me if I could make it, make the squares a little bit bigger so they could use like a Sharpie or something to make the numbers a little bit more uh, pronounced. So if you want a copy of this, let me know. But any three option worksheet is is honestly going to work. You know, when I first when I first started doing the three option worksheet, which was back in 2010 um i i didn't even have anything like that all i did is i took the 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 direct mail lead card and i flipped it over and i wrote on there option one option two option three and presented it i didn't have it laid out laid out like what we do now so um the th this card this is not what's this is not what's selling so what I'm going to do is what I like doing is I like putting in my options, but if you notice, there's no pricing, okay? And in this particular scenario, to make it easy, I'm just dealing with a single male. It's not a husband and wife, but you can see this has got a first and second. So if you did have a husband and wife, first insured, second insured, you could put in their name or their age or something so we know who uh, who each person is. Um so all I'm going to do is just describe to to, um, uh, to Bob. Hey Bob, by, based on your age and health, this guy's like 75 years old, by the way. Uh, he's in o o OK Health. He's going to qualify for a $20,000 death benefit. Um, Bob, based on your age and health, um, I'm just required to show you what the maximum death benefit is. So the maximum that we could provide you today would be a $20,000 death benefit for natural causes. So anything that would be considered natural, you know, heart attack, stroke, cancer, anything like that. However, if you were to pass away due to an accident, as long as it's ruled as an accident, Bob, and that's what it says on your death certificate that was an accidental death, that death benefit is actually going to double. So it would be an additional 20,000. So it would pay out a total of $40,000 for that. And then option two, I'm going to go over the 15 and the 30, and of course the 10 and the and and the and the the 20. So Bob, let me just show you what you would need to set aside on a monthly basis to fund the the fund the program. And then on this one, I'm just going to write it in at the at the at the bottom. Okay, so Bob, um, option option number one, you would just need to set aside 197. Option two is 152, and then option three is 98. But Bob, you tell me uh, which of these works best for you, and then you're just gonna you're just gonna shut up. 
and you're gonna wait for him to make a decision or not make a decision. Now, a little tip I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you here um, that kind of plays into the human um, brain or the the psychology a little bit. And that is is that when you're dealing with premiums that are three digits long, okay? So it's a hundred and something or two hundred and something. Um, number one is is that you can just leave off the change, just round round it up or or just round it so it's an even an even number, okay? Um, that's tip number tip number one. Obviously, when you write the application, you know if you're doing an e app, it's automatically going to figure it anyway. So just uh, either round it to the nearest nearest dollar so you're not showing the cents. It's a perception. The longer the number looks, the more expensive it looks. So I mean, if this was 197 point 51 that just it just is perceived as a longer number than just 197 dollars the other thing too is just another tip is that when you when you have premiums that are over a hundred dollars is get away from using the word 100 like in this case if you noticed um when i was going over the premiums and I said, you know, Bob, this is what you would need to side, set aside. I said 197, 152. I didn't say this one is uh, only $197. It's, it's, it's more syllables. It's longer to say. Therefore, the perception is it's more expensive. So just, hey, one, just call it 197, 152, or 98. Okay. And remember we talked about perception, okay? So it's just the way our brain calculates things. 197, for some reason, our brain interprets that as, as, as because it's uh, less to say, uh, 197 sounds cheaper than $197 and 52 cents, okay? Um, so you're gonna go through this, you're gonna shut up, you're gonna ask your client, um, Bob, you tell me which of these works best for you. And then you're gonna wait and you're gonna see if he's gonna pick one. Well, I can do the, the $98. Okay, great. You're gonna go right into finishing up the app. And you said you wanted your um, your daughter was gonna be the beneficiary. What how do you what's your what's her name again? Or how do you spell that? You're gonna get right in to finish closing the the application. A lot of times they're not gonna close and they're gonna hesitate and they're gonna start, when they start hemming and hawing, this is when you wanna interject. But you never wanna interject after you make the closing statement, which one of these works best for you. Um, you never wanna interject until your client is at the point that they can't make a decision. So if they start giving you, well, I'm not really sure, I need to think about it. Um, what they're really telling you, it's all about the, it's about the price. So what we want to do at that point is that we want to switch into payment close. Okay. We want to close our clients on premiums and payments and find something that's going to be affordable. So when my client, when Bob says, Oh, I'm not really sure. Um, I need to think about it. I'm simply going to say, Bob, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I, I I'm getting the feeling of what I'm showing you is a little bit more than what you are comfortable with. Am I correct? He's obviously gonna say correct. Bob, you remember um, Remember, we both agreed that at least having some coverage in place is better than not having anything at all? Yeah, I remember that. Um, we, out of curiosity, you tell me, how much did you expect a plan like this to cost? See if you can get a figure out of your client, okay? Um, sometimes when you say that, they'll come back and they'll say, well, you know, I was really hoping for something around 50 bucks a month. Oh, okay. Not a problem. So, um, Bob, out of curiosity, if I could show you a program that was, um, that was in, in the low fifties, maybe 51, $52 a month, does that work? Or do you need something a little bit lower? Okay. You're trying to, you want to work it once you, here's what I can tell you. Once you get your client to start giving you options, it's a done deal. You're gonna close them, okay? 
Um, but but you got it. You got to learn to get to that point and know that at the end of the day, as much as they they like you, they want the service, they see how their life is going to be better with your product. It still comes down to affordability and finding something that's going to work into their 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 budget. Do you have a little tip I'm going to tell you that is kind of a little bit of a, a psychology tip? And that is that when you're coming down to um, when you're coming down to payment closes, try to offer your client a, a a solution, a premium or a payment, whatever you want to call it, that the last digit is less than five, five or less. Okay. Just as an example, um, let's say we have 97 or 93, okay? Like 97, 93, not a big difference, but the way our brain perceives is that 90, 97, because the, the last digit is over five, 93 is a better, is a, is a better deal. Even, even when you're looking at it this way, when you're comparing Let's say something is, um, let's say $59 or $62. Someone may perceive $62 as a better value than 59 because of the nine digit here. 62, because the last digit is lower, it's less than five, our brain perceives it as a, as a good value, as a, as a lower price. So a lot of times when I'm trying to do when when my when the three option close has failed and my client didn't pick one of the three option and I'm going into payment closes as an example uh, in this price the the last one was ninety eight dollars okay so I may come in around eighty one dollars. So, Bob, I'm getting the feeling is what I'm showing you is a little bit out of your price range. You know, the $98, I feel like, is a little bit um, uh, out of the price range. Out of curiosity, if I could find you a program uh, for somewhere in the low 80s, maybe 81, 82, does that fit into your budget okay, or do you need something a little bit lower? And, again, I'm giving them an out. You always want to give – you never want to give your – you never want to ask a question where it's a yes or a no. So, if I ask the question – Bob, if I could find you a program in the low 80s, maybe keep you around 81, 82 hours a month, would that work for you? He may come back and say no. Okay, that's why I always do it with a follow-up of, Bob, if I could show you a program that's around $98, or I'm sorry, 91, 92 hours a month, this, would, would that fit into your budget okay, or do you need something a little bit less? Oh, I need something a little bit less. Okay, how about the low 70s? You know, or Bob, you tell me, you know, what do you feel like you could come from? What I'm only going to go down so far until I'm finally going to ask the client, well, Bob, you tell me, you know, um, you know, and, and build the value that they that, you know, Bob, listen, we've already determined, you know, that you that this program uh, that you need the program. Uh, you've already described to me what your situation is is like. If you don't have it, this is what it's, you know, this is how we're going to improve your situation. Um, once you've done, once you've done that, you've got a, you've done a good job. Then you're able to simply just ask the question, you know, Bob, you tell me, um, without taking the food off the table, you tell me what could you set aside comfortably on a monthly basis to fund your program? Well, I was thinking something around, you know, 50 bucks a month. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, Bob. If I could show you a program and I could keep you in the low 50s, 51, 52, let's say something no more than $55 a month, would that work into your budget? Yeah, that would work. Then I'm going to basically what I do in that situation is I do, I simply do another three option close. I show my client. Uh, an option for it could be like a seven thousand dollar option. Th this time they're going to be a little bit closer, you know, a six thousand dollar option. And at this point, I'm probably just writing it. I'm not redoing a whole new sheet. I'm just going to write it on the 
on the on the back of of this you know option one you know maybe fifty uh four dollars a month option two maybe um forty seven and then forty two so I may come back and something like this you know Bob seven thousand would run you fifty four dollars a month six is forty seven this is Five thousands forty. You two, out of these three, you tell me which of these works best for you. Ah, you know what? The fifty-four. You know, I can handle fifty-four bucks a month. Okay, so you're doing um, three option close. You're narrowing it on payment, and then sometimes it's okay to do an additional. Uh, if they're still not giving you that exact figure, it's okay to do one more three option close, a little bit tighter in price, not a huge contrast. And then typically your client will close on one of those three. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for plugging in to the, the call today. Appreciate you. If you need any help, be sure to give me a call and have a great weekend and God bless. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Bye-bye.